Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Obs and Gun Made Easy. In today's video, I'm going to discuss precipitate labor, also known as rapid labor. So what is precipitate labor? Precipitate labor is when the combined duration of the first and second stage of labor lasts for about three hours. Even up to five hours is considered a precipitate labor. Remember that there's three stages of labor. The first stage of labor is from the time a patient starts contractions to full dilatation. The second stage of labor is from full dilatation to delivery of the fetus. The first stage of labor is divided into two phases. The first phase is called the latent phase of labor, which is from the onset of contractions to 3 cm dilatation of the cervix. And the active phase of labor is from 4 cm dilatation to full dilatation. The Latin phase of labor should last about 8 hours in naliparous women and 5 hours in multiparous women. The active phase of labor should last about 5 to 7 hours in naliparous women and 2 to 4 hours in multiparous women. The second stage of labor should last about 2 hours in naliparous women and about 1 hour in multiparous women. The incidence of precipitate labor is about 3 to 5 percent in other pregnancies. So what are the risk factors of a precipitate labor? There's maternal risk factors as well as fetal risk factors. For the maternal risk factors, you have hypertension, like chronic hypertension, and controlled hypertension, young age, like teenagers, placenta abruptio, preterm labor, history of precipitate deliveries. Precipitate labor is more common in multiparous women as well as women with a wide and smooth pelvic canal. History of prior pregnancy losses, cervical incompetence, induction of labor with prostaglandins like mesoprostol, patients with a hypertonic uterus, and history of fertility treatment in the current pregnancy. The fetal risk factors include small weight, especially less than 2,500 grams babies, intrauterine growth retardation. So as you can see from the risk factors of having a precipitate labor, it's usually due to the combined effect of having hyperactive uterine contractions as well as reduced soft tissue resistance as well as having an incompetent cervix as well as having a small fetus. So how do you make a clinical diagnosis of a precipitate labor? First of all, it's important to evaluate each patient for the risk factors of having a precipitate labor. So risk factors like cervical incompetence, small baby, history of precipitate labors should help you prepare that this patient might have a precipitate labor in this current pregnancy. And also it's important to advise the patient to look out for the symptoms of precipitate labor. Sudden onset of intense contraction. Remember that in the first stage of labor, in the latent phase of labor, usually the contractions are mild. So if this patient is having severe or moderate contractions in the latent phase of labor, this should make you think of precipitate labor. Continuous contractions with almost no recovery time between the contractions. Then all of a sudden, the patient has an intense urge to push without warning. So what are the complications of a precipitate labor? The maternal complications include extensive tears to the cervix, vagina, as well as the perineum. This is because of fast and controlled pressure to the soft tissues. There's also a risk for uterine rupture because of a hypertonic uterus. There's a risk of postpartum hemorrhage after delivery due to anatonic uterus. Why? Because the smooth muscles of the uterus can also become tired due to the vigorous hypertonic contractions that were occurring before. There is risk of uterine inversion, but the complication is quite rare. There is an increased risk of acquiring an infection. Why? Because the patient might deliver in a dirty environment, like at home or in the car, whilst they are on the way to the hospital. Remember that precipitated labor can occur as little as 3 hours. Amniotic fluid embolism can occur, but it is a very rare complication. Fetal complications of a precipitate labor include aspiration of amniotic fluid. Remember that when the baby is descending, some of the fluid is pushed out of the lungs. But 
In a precipitate labor, there's not enough time to push some of this fluid from the lung. So what does the baby do? It aspirates the amniotic fluid. There is risk of infection due to delivery in and sterile environment, like delivery from home. There is risk of traumatic birth injuries to the fetus as well, like intracranial hemorrhage. Remember that in precipitate labor, there is not enough time for molding of the head. And molding protects and prevents the brain from having intracranial stress or hemorrhages. So if a patient delivered in the standing position, there is risk of damage to the skull as well as bleeding from a torn umbilical cord. Management of precipitate labor. First of all, patients with history of precipitate labor should be hospitalized before labor starts. During labor, you can use magnesium sulfate during contractions to suppress the contractions. However, this is a rare practice because you need to be well trained on how to use magnesium sulfate during precipitate labor. You help with controlled delivery of the head you can perform an episiotomy, especially in naliparous women. Avoid oxytocin augmentation because this will just worsen the contractions. Avoid rupture of membranes because rupture of membranes can help accelerate labor and you do not want that. Adequate suctioning after delivery if the baby has aspirated. And this comes to the end of our discussion on precipitate labor. Thank you for listening and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.